Hello again everyone, it's me Matmus. Thank you for joining me on today's video. We're talking about anti-tank missile systems once again from the Soviet era brought into the modern day spotlight with multiple militaries around the world. Yes, we are talking about the 9K111 faggot. Yes, I know it is the anti-tank missile system that everybody seems to get a chuckle over. But let's brush that aside here for now, folks. And remember that the word in Russian actually means bassoon. Uh, and it is a Saklos wire-guided anti-tank missile system formerly created by the Soviet Union, now produced, obviously, by the Russian Federation for the armed forces around the world. There are multiple different uh, variants and upgrades of this particular weapon system. We're going to talk about its features and how it operates, how it works a little bit. And then also touch a little bit on how North Korea has upgraded and modified this weapons platform for their own uses. So, um, it is a NATO reporting name known as the AT-4 Spigo, or Spigot, uh, not to be confused with the AT-4 anti-tank missile launcher that is used by infantry forces of the US Armed Forces. So just to make that clear, it is a completely different weapons platform. Uh, so the 9K111 Fagot was developed by the Tulip Machine Design Bureau, uh, and the development began in 1962 with the aim of producing the next generation of Saklos ATGMs for use in both man portable roles and tank destroyer roles, which basically mean they wanted to be able to put this into an infantry section, but also to be able to mount this on the multitude of Russian vehicles that were using these kind of weapons platforms for the Cold War era. And as I've mentioned in many of my videos before, anti-tank weapon systems is something that Russia does very, very well at, um, especially back in the Cold War era. And they have, you know, capitalized on that for many, many years. Still to this day, we see some of the most high-tech and deadly anti-tank missiles you can imagine. Um, the 9K111 Fago was developed alongside the 9M113 Conkers, which I have done a video on, guys, so please go check that out. Both missiles use very similar technology, only differing in size and can use the same type of launchers. Now, the missile platform came into service in 1970, and it came about that the Soviets needed something that could punch holes through armor in mass with their infantry and motorized uh, battalions slash regiments. So, the anti-tank platoon of a Soviet BTR equipped motor rifle battalion had two ATGM squads, each squad with two 9K111 Fagot teams. The team consisted of three men, the gunner, which carries the 9P135 launcher and a tripod as a backpack. The other two men carry two launch tubes each. The men also carry assault rifles but do not carry an RPG, because unlike earlier missiles, there is only a small dead zone inside of which the missile cannot engage the target. In addition to the four missiles the team carries, they normally have a BTR with an extra eight missiles. It can also be deployed from a BMP-1P, BMD-1P, BTRD, and a UAZ-469. The missile is stored and carried in a contained launch tube. It is fired from a 9P-135 launcher and is basically put on a simple tripod. A 9S-451 guidance box is fitted to that tripod with the missile sitting just above. The 9SH-119 sight is fitted to the left side from the gunner's point of view and the complete launcher weighs a 22.5 kilogram weight. The gunner lays prone while firing and the system can engage moving targets providing that they are traveling less than 60 km an hour. If you're trying to engage something at 60 km an hour over, something is very wrong. The launcher post can traverse through 360 degrees horizontally and plus or minus 20 degrees in elevation, allowing it to fire onto hillsides or off hillsides. The sight has a magnification of 10 plus to 5 degrees field of view and up to three missiles a minute can be fired from a launcher post. The system uses a gas generator to push the missile out of the launch tube. The gas also exits from the rear of the launch tube in a similar manner to a recoilless rifle. The missile leaves the launch tube at 80 meters a second and is quickly accelerated up to 186 meters a second by a solid fuel motor. The initial high speed reduces the dead zone of the missile since it can be launched directly at the target rather than in an upward arc. The launcher tracks the position of the incandescent infrared bulb on the back of the missile relevant to the target and transmits an appropriate command back to the missile via a very thin wire that trails behind the missile. The SACLOS guidance system has many benefits over MCLOS. Now there are lots of different variants of this weapon system, however they have been said to have an accuracy over 90% in some sources, though its performance is probably more comparable to the TOW weapon system of the United States. Of course, because of the different variants and configurations of this missile platform, it's kind of hard to really state solid facts or figures for the penetration values and the accuracy of these weapons, because it all comes down to the user and how they've configured them. There are three missiles that this launcher can take. The 9M111 
81 Faggot, 84 Spigot, or 84A Spigot A, which has a maximum range of 2,000 meters and a minimum of 70 meters with a warhead of 400 millimeters of penetration against rolled homogeneous armor or 200 millimeters towards armor inclined at 60 degrees. There is the 9M112 Faggot missile or the 84B, which is slightly improved in terms of its accuracy. The 9M111M, which is the 84C Spigot C with an improved motor, longer guidance wire, and a maximum range of 2,500 meters. This missile has an improved single heat warhead with a penetration value of 400 millimeters against rolled homogeneous armor or 230 millimeters towards armor inclined at 60 degrees. There are multiple different launches for this system too. The 9P135, which is 22.5 kilograms, can only fire the 9M111 Faggot series. The 9P135M can fire the same missile, but also the 9M113 Conkers NATO AT5 Spandrel designation. The 9P135M1 is an updated version of the 9P135M, which is basically allowing for better tracking and visuals onto target. The 9S451M2 is a launcher with a night sight featuring an anti-dazzle system which has been developed for modern day anti-tank warfare and the list of users for this missile is huge. I mean there's a lot of different countries that have used this missile because it's really A, very easy to get from the Russian um, military back in the day and uh, clearly it's a pretty good weapon system. I'm sure they wouldn't just uh, sell them if they weren't doing so good in terms of punching armor. Um, but North Korea have done some interesting things in the past. You know, they've upgraded lots of different weapon systems to their own configurations and changed things in and out. Um, in terms of politics aside, weapon systems themselves, they've actually upgraded the AT-4 Spigot to the Bolse 2, I hope I'm saying that right, uh, known as the Firebird or Phoenix missile, which entered service in 1973. What exactly has been upgraded on their newly developed weapon system is kind of unknown. Um, most of the apparent differences that you can see on this are a better configuration for the launch on the unit. It's really hard to see exactly what they've been doing to it, but it looks like the optics channel and the launcher itself seem to be quite identical with the original um, Soviet Union setup. The actual optics though have been changed. The 9SH119 optical sight, or the lower sight, seems to be rather unmodified, but the above of that is the guidance system box, which has actually been altered or replaced completely. What the idea is behind this new system is quite difficult to tell, it's not really known. Uh, it could be an integrated night vision sight, which is due to the lack of thermal images in North Korea, which seems somewhat improbable, or a different guidance method altogether, which is a lot less susceptible to jamming. Alternatively, the upgrades for the North Korean system could be focused on the missile itself, possibly improvements to the warhead or the rocket engine in order to boost penetration or range. So there we are folks, um, an impressive missile nonetheless, not a massive amount of penetration value, but for the days of which we're trying to knock out mass amounts of potential NATO armor as well, uh, if enough of these things were put in place they could definitely take out a warrior for sure. Uh, it's quite a bit of penetration value on these missiles and it would stop a battle group in their tracks if enough of these infantry or motorized uh, mechanized battalions had these things in place so you know scary stuff ATGMs are you know a tanker's worst nightmare uh, and this is something that could cause some real damage to a battle group uh, Russia clearly still continuing on with their ATGM programs modifying and upgrading pre-existing weapon systems or looking into a whole new uh, weapons platforms for you know guided missiles and such and I do still think that ATGMs are going to be the future of, of you know taking on tanks for the long haul I think tank on tank warfare is going to be very difficult to maintain going into the long future but that's a different story and we'll talk about that another day I hope you enjoyed today's video folks and learned a little bit about this weapons platform if you have any questions about it or if I've made any mistakes please let me know in the comment section below if you wish to support my channel please go check out my patreon account and uh, please hit the little bell by the subscribe button so you can be notified of any upcoming military content. Have a great day, all the best, and bye-bye.